Good evening, everyone. All senior choir members should be making their way, if not already, to the front to prepare to sing our national anthem. And Mr. and Mrs. Posner, our ASL teachers, have three students who are excited to perform the national anthem in ASL for tonight. The students are Dyla Cortez, Nida Khan, and Ciara Soto. Thank you to the Posners and to their students for enriching the ceremony tonight. You guys can take your places. Thank you. And please remain standing for the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose rough stripes and bright stars Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the class of 2023 Conard High School Commencement Ceremonies. My name is Lindsay Tringali, and I am an assistant principal here at Conard High School. I'm truly honored to be a part of the Conard community and to see the class of 2023 cross this stage and receive their diplomas. Please join me again in welcoming our senior choir members as they perform the Conard Alma Mater. choir students, and of course to Mr. Yurik. Thank you also to Mr. Wyatt, our band director, and Mr. Drake and Ms. McSweeney, our orchestra directors, for all of your hard work this year. If you were listening before the ceremony began, um, hopefully you would have heard the recordings of Conard students playing in the various concerts and performances. Please, let's give them all another round of applause. And before we continue with our festivities, I just have a few housekeeping notes. Uh, please make sure that you're seated in the correct area. A bracelet is required to sit in the designated ceremony seating area, as we have accounted for all of the chairs. If you do not have a bracelet, please feel free to sit behind the official ceremony seating area. Um, also, please put away any umbrellas in the back, um, as we don't want anyone's view obstructed for this evening. I appreciate it. Also, please silence your cell phones. This would help us out immensely, um, as I have been told that they might interfere with our sound system. Also, for those parents who wish to run front and center to photograph their child, I completely understand your excitement, and we're excited too, but we ask you to refrain 
as we have premier portraits taking professional pictures today. This will allow each student an opportunity to have an uninterrupted shining moment and will allow you to sit back and take in the details of this special day. Pictures should be posted by tomorrow after 12 for you to peruse and, and to order if you would like. Their ordering information is in the back of the program. While the weather is currently stable, it actually cleared up today, which we're all grateful for, and I would hate to think that it could change, but if it does not cooperate and the sky's open for some reason, students and all guests are to return to your cars and quickly check your emails for updates. There are many people that we must thank because without them, this event would not be what it is today. While graduation planning in any year requires dedication, effort, and time, with all the uncertainties we've faced in the last few years, it's been that much more difficult. While I describe these efforts, I would ask that you just please hold your applause until all groups and individuals are mentioned. The main office staff, including Michelle Pitkin, the custodial staff and, and plant services staff who've worked tirelessly on the logistics, both large and small, Connor staff, including security, faculty, chaperones, proctors, junior class ushers, who have helped to keep us all in order for the special occasion. I'd like to also thank Abby Esposito and Nicole Nyland, our senior class advisors, also deserve a special thank you for the work they've done with this class. Thank you for the invaluable input from the graduation speaker selection committee, and a special thanks to both Ramona Peretti and Hunter Parker for their dedicating of their time to support our two speakers this evening. Thank you also to our central office team represented this evening by Mr. Paul Vicinas, Dr. Rosina Haskins, and Ms. Ann McKernan. Your support as a collective team of all of our schools, pre-K through 12, is unwavering, always putting kids first. The West Hartford Public Schools Board of Education is here tonight, represented on stage with me by Ms. Renee Kamoff, who we'll be hearing from shortly, um, Ms. Nessarella, and Ethan Goldman. Thank you to the West Hartford PD for their presence today and to the Premier Portraits and West Hartford Community Television for covering this event. Thank you to West Hartford Community Television. Thanks to them, it's currently being live streamed. Thank you also to the Parent Volunteers and Safe Grad Planning Committee for all you do for our students and specifically for giving our students a special and safe way to bid farewell to their friends here at Conard. Lastly, of course, parents, caregivers, grandparents, and other family and friends of the graduating class. Thank you for helping our students get to this point. Please join me in giving all of these groups of people and individuals a round of applause. <laughs> to officially welcome you, I would like to introduce the president of the senior class, Saksham Tiwari. My name is Saksham Tiwari. <clears throat> As a senior class president, I warmly welcome you all to the graduation ceremony of Connard's class of 2023. Believe it or not, we did it. We are here today celebrating not just getting out of high school and going on to the next chapter of our lives, but also our consistent hard work, dedication, motivation, and, of, and most of all, our perseverance against all odds such as the infamous COVID pandemic, the hybrid learning system, and for many of us, the science classes. And senioritis, can't forget that. All of that deserves a loud round of applause. <laughs> Seems like just a week ago, we woke up on a fine morning, had a good breakfast, met with our friends, took some pictures, came to school, took some more pictures, and then posted them on Instagram, captioned, last first day in high school, or first day of senior year. When someone asked, what grade are you in? Some of us might have even accidentally called ourselves a junior, and then immediately corrected ourselves, thinking, dude, I'm a senior. I'm not taking chemistry anymore. To all the chemistry people present, I'm just kidding. I like chemistry, a little bit. But back to the point, 
almost nine months later, here we are, going out from this high school that has nourished us with good values and education, that hopefully is going to come in handy to us in the future. I've heard that apparently companies don't trust you with solving those huge equations we did in math class, so they choose computers over you instead. Talk about technology taking over humanity. But I'm sure we get to solve some of them sometimes. Jokes aside, on behalf of all the students graduating today, I extend special gratitude to all our wonderful teachers for always being there for us and teaching us some very valuable lessons. We are going to be your future, so I hope you taught us well. I also want to thank the Central Administration Department, the Board of Education, our principal, Mr. Hines, and assistant principals, Mr. Fisk, Ms. Tamborella Noble, Ms. Tringali, and the counseling department, and this entire Connor community for, in, for constantly supporting the system and consistently and enthusiastically participating in this collaborative effort over the years to make today possible. And finally, last but definitely not least, I would particularly like to thank our families and friends for always believing in us and never giving up on us during the highs and lows in life. I will conclude by saying once again that we did it. Congratulations to all my fellow graduates. I wish you all the best of luck for your journey beyond this point. After the end of today, June 13th, 2023, all of us are going to walk on our own separate paths. For some of us, maybe our roads are going to run close to each other for a while. For others, maybe not so much. But either way, we are still going to stay connected by a single thread of gold, an invisible string tying us all together. And that string would be our time spent and memories made together on these very premises that we call Conard High School. Go Conard. <laughs> on that positive note, I would now like to invite our respected principal, who is, by the way, no doubt an, a living example of hashtag dress to impress, to come up to the podium and share his words of wisdom with all of us. A round of applause for Mr. Hines, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to Conard High School's 2023 commencement ceremony. My name is Jamal Hines, and I'm the principal here at Conard High School. So I thought about a title for this speech, and I racked my brain because I'm kind of petty like that. Like, I'm hard on myself. Last year, I didn't give a title to, to my speech, and I thought it was tacky. I'm like, this is terrible. Every great speech has a title. So I was trying to come up with something that I thought would be appropriate for the event, for today. And so, although this is a title, it's also going to be the subject of the address today. And what that is going to be is the question, what are you going to do? Think about it. What are you going to do? I'm going to ask it one more time. What are you going to do? And one last time, what you going to do? The question seems simple enough, right? However, I want to call your attention to the many ways in which it can be posed, as well as the inferences that can be made by the way and the tone in which it is delivered. For instance, some of you, when talking about graduating today, you were asked by a friend or a family member or just a general acquaintance, so what are you going to do? Parenthetically, they're asking you, what are, going to, what are your plans going to be at the end of this graduating term? What are you going to do next? You can answer this with a variety of different, uh, variety of different ways. One is superficially sort of saying, yeah, I don't know, this and that. You may have a great plan that you have laid out, and you want to disclose that whole plan to them. Both of those opportunities are well and valid. The answer to that question mainly lies on what you prioritize, what you find important, and what you're willing to sacrifice in order to get 
what you want and where you need to be at that particular time. Lastly, there's a way to ask the question that conveys all moods of levels of concern and anxiety. I sort of displayed that a little bit to you at the end. My mom had that for me all the time. Jamal, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I remember my, my freshman year in college at UConn, I, I played cards a little bit too much, hung out in the student unit a little bit too much, uh, missed a couple classes a little bit too much and found myself on academic probation, had to bring my report card to my mom and Haywood Dean Hines in that Tennessee and draw looked at me and said, Jamal, what you gonna do? Uh-huh, I hear some mamas out there saying the same thing. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I hadn't planned for that. And for many of us, we have to take a look at what we want our life goal to be, as well as checking our moral compass along the way. I didn't do that. But that's what I'm asking that you, class of 2023, do. There are many times in your life when your life goal and your ethical decisions are at odds with each other. And it is at that point you have to reflect on the question, what am I going to do? Because usually the decision that you make speaks to your character. So in the midst of the questions swirling in your mind, deciding how you're going to address the question, coming up with the plan and then trying to execute the plan, all while that's going on, life slides by. What you gonna do? The best laid plan, sitting right out there on the lawn. What are you going to do? I love this class, I know this class, so I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do first. You're gonna have some choice words for life. You're going to say some smart things to life, and you're going to continue. And the language might be a little bit colorful at the time. And it's at this moment I want to address the families. Because while they're telling life about itself, and while they're telling life about how it's going to not hold them down and being mad at life, I'm going to talk to you families. Because contrary to popular belief, they're going to need you more after today than possibly they ever have. Because life doesn't have training wheels. Life doesn't give you a safety jacket. What these young folks are going to have to rely on and what they're going to lean on at the time where they're most upset are those of you who are out there in the audience who have been their support system the entire way. It is at that point not to say to them, I told you, you ain't in high school anymore. That's not the time to do that. Instead, remind these young minds about their greatness. Because even though they're angry and they're cursing out life, they're a little bit upset. They're a little bit scared. They're a little bit disappointed. And some of that is internal. They shouldn't have to feel like they can carry that alone. That's where we come in. Because life is not sensitive. Life doesn't care about all of the blood, sweat, tears, and investments we have made on these young people and that they've made on themselves. So guess what, family? Let's rally the truth. Let's remind these folks of their greatness. Because they're going to come and talk to you. I'm going to go talk to them for a second. Hold on. So, students, listen. After you have told life about itself, after you have started to realize, uh, I don't have the plan right now. What am I going to do? You have a support system at the ready. You've got a support system that's waiting. You've got a support system that has seen it before. And guess what? They may have some wisdom for you. Look, it won't be awkward to go talk to them. I promise you. I already had the conversation with them a little while ago. It won't be awkward. They're ready and waiting for you. 
So when you go and you talk to them and you listen and they give you that, that knowledge and they reinforce what you already know about yourself, now it's time to answer the question. What are you going to do? I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, class of 2023. You're going to do what you've been doing the entire time you've been in West Hartford. You're going to do what you've been doing the entire time you walk through these walls of, of Connor High School. You're going to be great. You're going to continue to work with people. You're going to continue to support those who may not be able to support themselves, all while sustaining your own passion. Because, see, people always say, find your passion. Find your passion. Once you found it, what are you going to do with it? Because passion is something that needs to be fed. It needs to be nurtured. It needs to be, to have life breathed into it. And that's by you. Because if you don't do it, passion dies. So what are you going to do? Find your passion. But remember, when you find your passion, commit to it. Commit to the grind. Your passion is the groove. The grind is the discipline. Commit to the grind. That's how you attain your passion. And lean on the folks who have already told you that you're great to reinforce that when you start to doubt yourself. Because that happens too. Life has a funny way of doing that. But in the short amount of time that I have left, here's what I see, because I know you and I love you. This is what I see from class of 2023. Not only are you going to be the best parents, the best civil servants, the, the most decorated and highly celebrated intellectuals, people who are humanitarians, folks who are going to serve this country, lay down their lives for this country, dedicate time and, and, and strength and all that they have to educating others in many different capacities and ways. That's what you're going to do. And then here's what I, I hope that you will do. I hope that you'll come back. I hope that you'll come back and tell us what you've done and how you've done it and, and the grind that you had to go through and how you felt prepared. Not just by what Wes Hartford did, but because of the growth that you saw in yourself. And then you're willing to share your story because believe it or not, there are folks here in the sound of my voice who will look to you for inspiration. And they aren't necessarily little kids. There may be people in this audience who haven't walked the stage and they're looking at you for inspiration. You're going to be that and more. I charge you to come back and tell us about it so that you can inspire somebody else, so that they can stand on your shoulders so that you can help them answer the question, what am I going to do when it's time? I just want to be here to see it happen. I just want to be here to say I, I knew when and I saw them when. I am so proud and so lucky and so thankful to have been your principal. What are you going to do? I know what you're going to do. I'm excited to see how you're going to do it. Congratulations, class of 2023. I would like to introduce Superintendent Paul Basinas for our next message. Thank you, Mr. Hines. My speech does have a title. It's called Crossroads. So members of the Board of Education, Principal Hines, esteemed guests, faculty, friends, family, and most importantly, graduates. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Vicenis. I am the acting superintendent, and I'm a former Conard High School teacher and administrator. And as I pondered my comments for today's graduation, I landed on the following story. It's February 2010, and I'm sitting in the back of a Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopter with 40 or 50 of whom will become my closest friends. But as we drop elevation and the ramp is lowered, a tail gunner straps in and takes position. And the surreality of the moment narrows my focus. I feel it is only me. The silhouette of the gunner fades and I see only the backdrop of the wide open mountains. My mindset, my attitudes, and my dispositions are at a crossroad. 
As I look out, the juxtaposition of the beauty of the mountains in the background and the presence of the tail runner in the foreground affords my conscious mind to realize that I have crossed the threshold as I hover only thousands of feet above a hostile combat zone. As I stand and look out at the unknown, my civilian identity and experiences behind me, I step forward into a bigger world, a different experience, armed with the confidence and skills gained from years of training and education. So here we are today, at your crossroads. Your innocence in the portfolio of all your youthful achievements and hands. You stand at the threshold of adulthood with the open door of opportunity waiting before you. What lies on the other side? What path will you follow? I recently shared a short poem adapted from a longer work by Jane Yolen entitled, What is the Path? And I'd like to share that with you now. What is the path? The road, the path, the aftermath. A compass, a guide, a world open wide. The journey, the poem, the coming home. The coming home. For me, the journey has led me home, here, to Conard High School. You see, Conard is the place where I began my career in West Hartford, really, where I began my career in education. I started in the West Hartford Public School some 30 years ago as a math teacher, eventually moving up to be a department supervisor and later an assistant principal, all here at Conard. I left Conard in 2009 probably before any of you were in kindergarten. After being activated for a deployment to Afghanistan with the 102nd Infantry. And when I left, it was a celebration, like today, only smaller, but it was the entire school that came out to wish me well, to see me off. But my path took a turn, and when I returned home to West Hartford in 2011, I did not come back to Connor. Instead, I landed in central office and had the good fortune to the opportunities that advanced my career, culminating with my appointment as superintendent of schools. I am both proud and excited to be here with you today as I cross this threshold to return and reunite, and more importantly, to see you off and wish you well along your paths, your journeys, your world open wide. In this district, we speak of clearing paths to bright futures with no limits, our jobs, our passions, have been for the last 12 years to clear a path for you to this moment and just beyond, to this crossroads, to provide you the vision and the tools to see and navigate what lies ahead, to see down the path and beyond to the number of forks in the road in order that you can choose a way that best suits your destination. That said, there are bends and dips in the road that none of us can see. There will be steep climbs and turns that you will need to navigate, comforted in the knowledge that you've gained the perseverance, the self-determination necessary to make the journey. And as you lay down your pencils and pens, the essays and projects completed, trading these for a diploma, and stepping down from the stage toward college, career, military service, or other post-secondary experiences, with all of this high school behind you, know that you carry forward the skills and dispositions necessary to succeed and thrive along your path. You take with you the what that you need to be successful. Collaboration, communication skills, problem solving and creativity, inquiry and critical thinking. You've also mastered the how, how to use these skills with honor, integrity, respect for self and others, determination, self-efficacy, curiosity, and love of learning. So I'll try to answer the question that Principal Hines asked, what are you going to do? Jay Wilnick, a former Navy SEALs team commander and is a New York Times best-selling author, and he's a professional speaker on topics of leadership. Borrowing from his words, I'd like to leave you with a fundamental list of, fun of rules to live by when you do what you'll do. First, be humble. Wherever you go in life, you're a member of a team in a community. No one is above the team, and no one is below it. You all have a role to play to be successful. 
Never act like you know everything. The most successful people in life are lifelong learners. Always consider what you can learn from others. Listen, ask questions, seek advice, and then heed it. Treat people with respect. Regardless of station in life, everyone's a human being, and how you treat others is a reflection of who you are and how you're perceived. Take ownership for your failures and your mistakes, and pass credit for success onto your team up and down the chain of command. Work hard. As a leader, you should always be working harder than everyone else. No job is ever beneath you. Have integrity. Do what you say and say what you do. Be balanced. Extreme action and opinions are usually not good. Be decisive. When it's time to make a decision, make one. Build relationships. That is the job of a leader. A team is a group of people who have relationships and trust one another. And finally, get the job done. Performance counts. And remember that any job worth doing is worth doing well. As for today, as you close this chapter and begin anew, I congratulate you on a job well done. You've made it here to this crossroads. As you look out and step forward into tomorrow's journey, be decisive, be balanced, be humble. Listen, take ownership, show respect and demonstrate integrity. Know that you carry a piece of us with you and we stand firmly behind you until our paths cross again. Good luck and Godspeed, class of 2023. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our Board of Education representative, Dr. Dur Dr. Renee Kamoff, for her comments. Good afternoon. Acting Superintendent Vicenas, Principal Hines, teachers, staff, family, friends, and graduates of the Conard High School Class of 2023. It is my honor to address you today on behalf of the West Hartford Board of Education. To the graduates, congratulations on your graduation today. What an amazing accomplishment. Throughout your time at Conard, you've worked towards the goals outlined in the vision of the graduate. With your education and experiences that you've gained here at Conard, you are well prepared for the future ahead. The values from the vision of the graduate do not end here at graduation. I encourage you to continue to be curious and learn about the world and its people. Collaboration and communication are critical skills that will serve you well in any situation. The future holds problems that we won't have immediate solutions for, and problem solving and creativity will be crucial to find answers. As you move forward, Remember to show respect for yourself and others through your words and actions. You can always learn something new from another person, even if you disagree. At this moment of change in your lives, it's easy to focus on what's next, whether that be a new job, new school, volunteering, traveling, or serving our country. While it's good to anticipate what's to come, I encourage you to savor the present. This moment is what you've been working toward for years, and your graduation today is a celebration of your hard work and dedication. However, success is not a solo act. Be sure to thank those who have helped you along the way, family, friends, classmates, neighbors, teachers, school staff, coaches, and others. Continue to maintain these relationships as you move forward. The people around you will continue to enrich your lives and it is important to acknowledge their role in your success. Finally, learning does not end here. There's more to know in this world than time in which to learn it. No matter where life will take you, continue to challenge yourself, to question the status quo, and to work to make the world a better place. Congratulations again on this achievement. We cannot wait to see where you go from here.
Thank you, Dr. Tama. In a moment, our senior choir will perform For Good, a song composed by Stephen Schwartz, and some of you may recognize it um, from the musical Wicked. So yes, yeah, senior choir members, you can make your way over to the risers. Full disclosure, this song invokes a lot of emotion in me. It's, as all, it's always been a favorite of mine as I'm a huge Broadway musical fan. Actually, it was two seniors who sang this song to each other last year at a cabaret night in the black box, and it brought me to tears. It is just so impactful. I'm sure this will be true for many of you this evening. High school is certainly a time to learn academics, to learn independence, and how to make good choices. However, it's also a time when friendships are formed. And as a result of these friendships, we become the people we are. They leave a handprint on our hearts. We will never know if we've been changed for the better, but we certainly are grateful for all we experienced with our friends. Let's please welcome back the Conrad Senior Choir.
who told you. <laughs> um, that was just as moving as I knew it would be. So as we wipe away our tears, um, can we please give one more round of applause for the senior choir members? It was fabulous. In a moment, you'll be hearing from two senior class speakers. They've worked really hard on preparing and perfecting their content with feedback from one of our English teachers, Ramona Pachowski Peretti. They were also coached and supported working alongside our theater teacher, Hunter Parker. I'm excited to present to you your first senior class speaker, Avery Reicher. Avery R054 at student.whps.org. As I sat in fourth grade receiving my very own school email, I laughed. 2023, I asked my teacher, is that even a real year? To a nine year old whose only concern was being first in line to get school nachos, graduation had seemed so far away. Just two years ago today, I was sitting out there in this very audience. My older brother was graduating, and the whole time I kept thinking about what it would be like when we got here. Which teacher would give the commencement speech? Who would I be sitting next to? Still, it felt so far away. The first time I truly realized we would be graduating this year was when I was decorating my senior shirt. My friends and I had gotten together, and we each picked out our own patches to show on the sh sew on the shirts, perfecting them as if it would determine the fate of our senior year. This was the moment it hit me. Those scary seniors, the ones that would be so tall they would knock us over in the hallways, we had become them. Although I don't think I'm tall enough to knock over a freshman in the hallway. And now, as I stand before you in my very own cap and gown, looking into an audience of faces I have spent the past four years with, it feels completely real. From the very first day of school, we were stressed out. As September seniors, we were encouraged to finalize our plans for the future, whether it be college, work, military, technical training, or gap year. Even during the summer before senior year officially started, our emails were flooded with notifications about upcoming planning events. The path I chose was college, which meant spending hours upon hours writing and revising essays and crafting my resume. I can't even count the number of times I read those essays. The main college essay, the one to be sent to every school, felt like a never-ending journey. We started these essays junior year, but they didn't quite feel real until the crush of application senior year. When I finally finished and clicked submit, it felt freeing. All of a sudden, this large weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I was so proud of my work that I decided to share it with a friend in my English class. As we were admiring each other's work, my friend innocently asked, you edited out this typo, right? What typo? <laughs> there couldn't be a typo. I quickly checked the comment app, and that's when catastrophe struck. I had written the same word twice. That very moment, panic mode set in. I had proofread this essay a thousand times. How could I not notice this? How could I submit it to all 12 colleges? As a student with OCD and anxiety, my mind started spinning as I began to spiral. I started to text my mom saying that no college would want me with a mistake like this and I'm so stupid. Yes, those were my exact words. My mom responded asking me if one typo really took away all the hard work from the past four years. While her well-intentioned words helped a little, my brain was cloudy and I couldn't think properly. I immediately made my way to the place we all go to break down the school bathroom. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of TikTok trends, but I'm extremely grateful that we've learned not to trash our bathrooms so they're open for a good cry. Or in this case, a full-blown meltdown. Making my way to the thankfully unlocked bathrooms, the thought of the typo consumed me, and I couldn't think of anything else. Having survived high school, it feels pretty safe to assume that everyone here has experienced a similar moment of panic. A fear that a mistake we made was irreversible and catastrophic. 
With OCD, I struggle to control these thoughts, fixating on my mistakes. When I enter panic mode, it's hard to reason with myself. Luckily at that moment, I had two of my best friends there to help calm me down, and I can't thank them enough. Looking back at that moment now, committed to a college that didn't judge me based on my one small typo, and truthfully most likely never even noticed it, I realized that my typo did not define who I am. Ironically, my college essay was about a mistake I made while coaching a swim team that led me to have a panic attack. I wrote about the growth that came out of this learning moment, and clearly it took me longer than I thought to realize this lesson. As you can all tell by my story, I still have moments where my mistakes appear to me as the end of the world, but are in reality far from it. I'm learning the importance of not dwelling on mistakes like these, and remembering that our worst case scenarios often don't come true. Honestly, I regret my reaction to the typo, but I wanted to share my story with the hope that we can all reconsider how we frame our mistakes. We've all heard it before. Mistakes make us human. They are what help us to grow. While this advice may seem cliche, it's completely true. Perhaps the most important part about making a mistake is realizing that you must forgive yourself. As I stand here today, looking at all of us together, my hope is for every single one of us to be recognized for our hard work and accomplishments. These past four years have not been an easy journey. As members of the Conard class of 2023, we have all faced struggles, whether it be getting into a fight with a friend, failing a test, or noticing a typo in your college essay. These struggles and mistakes got us out here on this field today. So I ask the question, do we choose to let our mistakes paralyze us, or do we choose to move on and find the lessons that they can teach us? As we venture into the next chapter of our lives, following whatever path chosen, we must hold these mistakes close to our heart, but hold the lessons even closer. Know that we are not defined by our mistakes, but rather by how we choose to handle them. As our time at Conard comes to a close, we must leave with the ability to learn and grow from our mistakes so we can become the people we are meant to be. And here we are now, finally in 2023. Nachos are still my favorite school lunch, as I'm sure it's pretty similar to all of you. The year that seemed non-existent is now a reality. As sad as it may be, after August, we will never again sign into our at student.whps.org emails. While our emails will cease to exist, we remain the sole Conard class of 2023. Whatever path we choose, we are bonded by being the only class to ever receive this email. I don't know what it will be like to go back to just regular Avery Reicher now, but maybe that's the point, since none of us are the same as who we were four years ago. I additionally want to expend a, extend a special thank you to everyone who has gotten us to this point. Family members, past teachers, Mr. Hines, our three assistant principals, but most of all, let's celebrate the work that we have done to get ourselves to this point. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today and congratulations to each and every member of the Conard class of 2023. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next student speaker, you may recognize her as Elsa from this year's Conard Musical. Please welcome Kayla Resnitsky. Um, for legal purposes, I'm going to have to say friend of Elsa, but um, <laughs> oh, it is nice and cool up here. Wow. Um, so, uh, here we go. I would first like to thank everyone who has gotten me to this point, my parents, my friends, my teachers, the administration here at Conard, and all others who have supported me to become the person that I am today. Here we all are, Whew, class of 2023. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. We have reached the finish line of our high school careers and will soon begin a new chapter of our lives. There are many emotions as we sit here today, excitement, joy, pride, anxiousness, and maybe even a bittersweet feeling as well. Each and every one of us has made memories here at Conard and we will soon move forward 
to make new ones. And so before we depart today, I'd like to share with you some things that have helped me carve out my own path here at Comet. Number one, we need to each be ourselves. Each and every one of us have a gift or a talent. Whether or not we know what that gift is yet, everyone here has the potential to impact someone else's life. Figuring out what our gift or our talent may be may take some time and it may mean trying new things, things we never even expected to try. I tried out many different things in my time here at Conard and I found avenues that I love, such as music and psychology and writing. And I also found out that I definitely will not become a physicist. That's, no. And that's okay. The most important thing is to be true to yourself and not change for anyone else. Because at the end of the day, the only person you should be proving your worth to, who you should be making happy, is yourself. I struggled with deciding what I wanted to do after high school. There were so many options. There were so many expectations put on me to go to this school or to do this major, to do this or to do that. However, I decided to go to a place where I believe I will be the happiest. And that is the kind of decision I will never regret. Another thing I've learned here at Conard is to dream and to dream big. Oprah Winfrey once said that the biggest adventure you can take in life is to live the life of your dreams. So be brave. It will be scary and I will admit I am scared too. Deciding to go to a conservatory for music is not only a huge commitment, but it is taking a chance. I'm choosing to go down a path like so many others that will not be easy. I will have to make sacrifices and take even more chances, and at sometimes I will be overwhelmed. But then I realize my support system is like no other. Between my family, my teachers, my friends, They've all been by my side every step of the way, one note at a time. Music is my passion. It truly is. It makes me happy each and every day. So my challenge to you is to find that one thing that makes you truly happy and then pursue it. Fight for it. And then find the people who will help you fight for it as well. You will encounter so many people in your life. Some will stay and some will go, but hold on to the ones who will help you find and fulfill your purpose. I've made friends here for a lifetime because we created better versions of ourselves when we are with each other, and that is something that I am truly forever grateful for. And my final big discovery? Well, okay, this is gonna sound cheesy. However, I say this with all seriousness. Love yourself. We need to love ourselves, and that is hard. As a perfectionist myself, realizing that mistakes are okay was a hard concept for me to grasp, and that is something I think a lot of us can relate to. Almost everyone has something that they do where they don't like making mistakes, where the pride in their work and their product, what they create for themselves and others, is ever most vital to them. But you must recognize that you are not going to be perfect. It's impossible. And that you will make mistakes, and that those mistakes, like Avery said perfectly, will make, are what make you human. I may not always get that gig, or those high notes, and I will definitely not make everyone happy. But one thing I've learned at Conard is that we cannot be so hard on ourselves. Because if we are always knocking ourselves down, we will never get the chance to build ourselves back up again. And then once you feel comfortable loving yourself, love others, your friends, your family, and pay gratitude to all the things that make you feel loved. Just love, and if you can't love, then like. And if you can't like someone, then acknowledge them. But do not ever hate, because hate drives fear, and there's nothing worse than being afraid of who you are, or expressing yourself, or who you want to be. And so, as I close here today, I want to remind us that we are a generation like no other. We make our voices heard for the issues that we are passionate about. We accept those for who they are and support them to become the rising stars that they want to be.
and we all have the power if we come together to make true and positive change. And I know that if we believe in ourselves and each other, we can accomplish absolutely anything. Thank you, and I wish you all the best of luck in the next chapter of your lives. And now I am honored to present with you our faculty speaker, the lovely, the impeccable, the amazing Miss Nicole Nyland. Welcome everyone. My name is Nicole Nyland. This is year 29 for me here at Conard. I teach AP Psychology and American Government. I am the senior class co-advisor, not the cool one, that's Miss Espo. I'm also the assistant uh, boys varsity soccer coach, specifically the goalkeepers coach. If you know me or took a class with me, you know that I love to tell stories to illustrate my point, and tonight won't be any different. Whether in the classroom, on the soccer field, in the hallways, or selling you prom tickets, I have found all of you to be distinct personalities. You have inspired me and helped me find my love for teaching. I've loved having the opportunity to mom you, just looking, um, to make sure you had snacks when you were hungry and talked you off the ledge when you were stressed about a test or drama about prom tables. I am thankful for my lunch bunch who found a way to get me to laugh every day. Some of you have left me in awe of your concern, compassion, and support for each other. One event that illustrated that this year happened on the soccer field. One of our goalkeepers suffered a horrific injury. After making an incredible save, he was knocked unconscious and needed medical support. In the immediate moments following his injury, as chaos could have ensued, instead we saw kindness, care, and compassion. Our senior leaders immediately ran to his side, called the coaches and medical assistants onto the field, and they huddled our team on their own to support each other and send positive thoughts to their teammate. In a moment of crisis, the willingness to take action and support each other left me speechless, especially since the care didn't end there. Over the next several days and weeks, team teammates continued to reach out and check, check on him. This is the level of compassion that we need in this world, and this class exemplifies that. No path, no one's, no one's future path is going to be a straight line. No matter what plan you have in mind right now for your future, be flexible in that mindset so you can shift or be open to a new possibility, no matter how scary that is. It just may open a door that you never saw coming. When my older son Jack was cut from soccer as a senior in Glastonbury. He was devastating for us and devastating for him. Here's a kid who's played since he was five, played premier, who had, was an excellent player and an even better teammate. <coughs> in the depths of his despair, the football coach came to him and said that he didn't have a kicker and he would like him to give it a shot. He decided to take a risk and that season he killed it. He found a newfound family in football, got recruited to play football in college, and he's now the kicker for the University of New England. I would have never in a million years thought I would have a college football player. Never. In contrast, my younger son Alex, who's an ex exceptionally skilled goalkeeper, also playing at the highest, highest levels, made the GH GHS team in the fall. After being offered a spot while a lot of his good friends got cut, he decided he no longer wanted to play and decided to walk away because he just didn't love it. Over the winter, he decided to play volleyball and play club and started was the starting libero on the JV team despite having never played in his life. Shout out, he'll be helping the um, Conard freshman soccer kids next year. Heck, <laughs> this year, I was able to do something that I never thought I would do. I got to coach on the soccer field. This provided an opportunity for me to step out of my comfort zone, and I found something that I absolutely love to do. When your path takes a turn, because it will, it may be for the best, whether or not you can see it in the moment, change can be scary. Like you're about to change and embark 
on going off to college, the military, a trade, or a job. The important thing is to be able to ride the highs and endure the lows. Remember, life is what happens when you're planning. Don't let other people define you. My college advisor didn't think much of me in our first meeting. He said that I should be a weather girl. Not a meteorologist, mind you, a weather girl. So basically he was telling me I was cute and stupid. I cried. I cried a lot. And then I did everything in my power to prove him wrong. In my senior year of college, that same professor had nothing but compliments for me after observing my student teaching. He specifically mentioned that he thought I would be a fantastic teacher. It's odd, but maybe I owe him for his initial narrow-minded view of me. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I know we've heard this a number of times today, but there's no shame in asking for help. It's not an indication of weakness or a sign of, uh, not a sign of weakness. It's usually a sign of wisdom and self-awareness. No question is too dumb. No emotion is too trivial. I think almost everyone in my eighth period class rolled their eyes when Jack called to see if he could wear shorts to a job interview this year with the admissions department. I would rather he reach out with questions than not and do the wrong thing. Make personal connections. As I look out to all of you, I see individuals that I've come to know over the past few years, not graduates, not a particular class, but the people and personalities that I have grown to cherish. Personal connections are important because they provide us with emotional support in challenging times. They allow us to grow and they can boast our, boost our self-esteem by increasing feelings of happiness. Psychological research has shown I've seen you, you, and you roll your eyes at that one. Uh, let us feel less, out, less isolated and we're less likely to, to experience anxiety and depression. The more we can talk to others and find our people, the more likely we'll find success. And that is the wish we have for you. I'm going to leave you tonight from a quote with our, from, my, from the final episode and one of my favorite shows, Ted Lasso. They said, quote, human beings are never going to be perfect. The best thing we can do is keep asking for help and accepting it when we can. And if you keep doing that, you will always be moving forward to better, unquote. Leave today focusing on not being perfect, but being brave. Build a better world. We are counting on you to do great things. Now, last year, Ms. Peretti started a tradition that I was not about to break. She had teachers and administrators write a note to each and every student. So as a final gift to you, we would like each of you to reach under your chair and grab your note from someone in the school who cares very much about you. Thank you. sharing your moving words, thoughts, and advice with all of us, Ms. Nyland. It's clear you've made an impact on so many. And now all the students are taking a look at the cards from those who you impacted. I don't think students recognize enough how much you impact the adults who you interact with every day. So this is a moment for you to take that in. I can't wait <laughs> for all of you to finish reading your cards. So I'm going to continue. Um, for those of you that are with me right now, um, we're actually going to begin the part that all of the graduates are really waiting for, um, and that's with the presentation of diplomas. So the names of the graduates will be read by our school counselors, Greg Ferry, Adam Linker, Marisa Berry, Karen Mortensen, Kristen Mangini, and Alexandria Harvell. During the presentation, I will ask that you, the audience members, please remain in your seats and refrain from applause until all students have received their diplomas. This will ensure that each student has their special moment as both the graduates and family of the graduates can then hear all the names being read. So Mr. Ferry will be our first reader.
Madeline Adams. Johnny Agrita Vasquez. Afaf Albert. Brendan Election. Aston Alexander. Kelvin Alexandri. Robert Anderson. Anastasia Andrews. Aiden Aponte. John Yoshio Arsimbo. James Asadow. Emily Christine Aubrey. Joseph Ayala. Grace Cargill Babcock. Julia Noreen Barada. Kyle Barnum. Tristan Henry Barron. Giancarlo Barcanero. Greer Stanton Baumgartner. Sophia Marie Bavaro. Alexander William Beck. Lauren Allison Belanger. Ashani Iona, Iona Belnavis. Reese Calvin Berrigan. Isabella Bermudez. Sanjana Bhatt. Justin Vince. Ian Black. Hazel Emily Borio. Jaden Borla. William Bowler. Stephanie Lee Brissetti. Jason Quasey Brown. Kyla Nicole Brown. Nina Marie Bozinski. Rena Daisy Burr. Noah Burgio. Isaiah Burgos. Owen Burnett Herkes. Ryan Christopher Bushnell. Madeline Ava Campbell. Carmen Alexandra Candelis. Amy Kangro. Estella Cow. Mason Emily Capone. John Carney. Ayana Carson. Dimes Peter Casarella. Isaiah Lucas Casillas. Adriana Miles Casuso. Anthony Catanzaro. Isabel Chantavong. 
Joyce Chen. Joyce W. Chen. Michelle Chu. Anna Kibler Clark. Austin Giovanni Clay. Estelle Miriam Cohn. Georgia Cohn. Marcel Joseph Cohn. Allison Michelle Colburn. Anya Coleman. Dyla Yuris Cortez. Maximiliano Andres Cortez. Ayla Mia Cotto. Abigail Grace Craig. Caroline Rose Cronin. Sandy Allen Cruz. Reeve Elizabeth Cunningham. Janelle Olivia Kushney. Isaiah John Sear. Caitlin Grace Tchaikowski. Ruby Jamison Tchaikowski. Connor Raphael Daniak. Benjamin Patrick Danis. Tatiana Rose Dottil. <laughs> Tyler Decca. Harun Devkota. Javian Jerome Dickens. <laughs> Evan Dillman. Tegan Lydia DePippo. Hui Doan. Claire Louise Dombrowski. Sammy Ben Dridi. Angela Alaguyen Dulwan. Brody Jared Dupont. Cadence Carol Durham. Zaria Desiree Eaton. CJ Raekwon Edwards. Gabriel Ernest Epstein. Amadis Estrella. Emily Claire Faenza. Brett Farquhar. Giancarlo Fidolfi. Sofia Pedro Ferreira. Isabel Desiree Figueroa. Jaden Xavier Flores. Zach Flores. Roman Isaiah Francis. Gianna Gagliardi. Clara Margaret Gagliardi. Sean Pierre Gagnon. Kaylin Elizabeth Gator. Gabriel Garcia. Carrie Ann Gard. Dominic Mark Gatinella. 
Haley Don Gauthier. Maggie Kate Gillis. Rachel Joan Giroux. Natalie Nicole Gonzalez. Brendan Garrett Grady. Celia Maxine Gruber. Trevor AJ Hardyenden. Salana Zen Harrison. Tatiana Marie Harrison. Sophia Hartunian. Bailey Jane Hawksby Mullins. Jacob Aaron Henretta. Alejandro Jonas Heredia. Brian Hernandez. Eileen Herrera. Ryan Walter Anthony Hicks. Mariah Hill. Justin Ho. Alyssa June Hodgson. John Camano Hodgson. Dean Fisher Holland. Helen Hong. Nyla Ariana Howard. Patrick Ashton Hammond. Alexander David Wapaya Rios. Amanda Claire Hungerford. Christian Thomas Hunt. Kayla J. Inca Saldarriaga. Alexander Bradley Jarvis. Lauren Genevieve Jazerski. Kahari Jones. Theodore Peter Canellos. Jaden W. Carriam. Sharon Deep Carr. Elena Leilan Kelly. Nicole Lynn Kelly. Nida Khan. Ashley Edith Kaloran. Bethany Kyung In Kim. Audrey Lynn Perkudis. Noah Kaufman Adsit. Ibrahim Qureshi. Ethan Samuel Kramer. Molly Elizabeth Kyle. Connor Matthew Lafferty. Lucas Constantino Laurentino. Chloe Loretta. Jayla Annabella Lavo Pimentel. Jessica Tran Lee. Adriana Natalia Leduc. Samuel Atticus Lee. Benjamin Avery Lemieux. Garrison Pierce Allen Lemke. Mary Regina Leonard. Molly Shea Lerner. Sophia Anna Levesque. Andrew Sterling Lewis. Elijah Corey Lewis. Jolyn Lynn. Gabrielle Longman. <laughs> Carla Maria Lopez. David Lopez. Jack Perkins Lovejoy.
Stephen Edward Mack. Yes, yes, Ewan Harold Alexander McKinnon. Anisha Mador. Maggie Maloney. Shane Maloney. Connor Edward Mangini. Yeah, Connor. Aaron Mark. Flynn McCaffrey. Declan James McCann. Parker McCarthy. Allison McDill. Thomas Gavin McGowan. Nina McIntyre. Amaya McCreeth. Macy Ann McPhee. Yeah, Macy! Yeah! Sydney Meekle. Jose Mercado Martinez. Grace Elizabeth Milch. Sydney Grace Spring Miranda. Alex Momeka. Oh yeah, Alex! Sydney Kid! Sydney! Anissa Sarah Mohammed. Sarah Motisham. Luciana Valentina Morales. Jackson Jeffrey Morehart. Jacob Morin. Reed Thomas Morrow. Julia Lee Mashka. Megan Ivers Murphy. Christopher John Nelson. Tyler Nye. Aaron No. Devin Nguyen. Keaton Nguyen. Juan Nguyen. Ella Nacastro. <laughs> Leah Yuju Nichols. Ava Kate Nigro. Gabrielle Virginia Nyman. Runish Narula. Gabriella Nobu. Liba Noman. Jason Newton. Emma Elizabeth Oburn. Ryan Michael Obisham. Paul Leonard O'Connell Bach. Brianna Janelle Oliveira. Adam Joseph Orlowski. Daniela Orego Ortiz. Angelica Maria Padilla. Joseph Russell Polisi. Juan Felipe Palomino. 
Andrew Robert Parody. Catherine Claire Parker. Thomas Paul Parker. Holden Griffin Patrici. Marlena Angela Pegalo. Emily Maria Pereira. Ava Callie Peterson. Charlotte Elizabeth Teresa Phelan. Howard Pham. Lake Pekarski. Sophia Quinn Pinson. Zoe Adams Pinckney. Alexandra Grace Pita. Noah Plamundin. Evan Price. Victoria Pushelski. Dewash Pun. Richard Quintana. Zahara Sky Qureshi. Daniel Felipe Ramos. Camden Brent Rancourt. Kylie Javiana Randolph. Carter Matthew Reck. Avery Lynn Reicher. <laughs> Kayla Elva Jean Resnitsky. <laughs> Cheyenne Star Rialt. <laughs> Janaza Shawnice Richardson. James Richardson. Max Kennedy Riker. Lola Justice Whitlinger. Kevin Rivas. Jaden Manuel Rivera. Amelia Teresa Robinson. Serena Rose Roach. Brendan James Rochford. Oh, yeah, Brendan. Bethany Rockcastle. Oh, Charlene Elise Rodriguez. Oh, yeah, Charlene. Jeffrey Walter Rosborg Jr. Oh, yeah. Aspen Lynn Rosner. Oh, yeah. Chase Rivera. Jeliaris Rubert. Gabriel Rufasto. Jason Shane Sabino. Lisa Shania Samid. Gita Sanachera. Jeffrey Santiago. Matthew Kyle Santoro. Leo Nard Sarmento. Armin Sarwar. Vedan Sawant. Michaela Sawyer. Joseph Scalise. Michael Robert Seeger. Naveen Sakerin. Elisa Sevijano Colon. Aiden Seymour. Elian Shaquille. Angelina Sharp. 
Aiden Shea. Michelle Silarak. Mia Samos. Navpreet Singh. Parmeet Singh. Parwinder Singh. Thatcher Slocum. Rasheen Jalan Smiley. Ryan Andrew Smith. Nicole Esther Sosa. Sierra Soto. Maya Souza. Henry St. Pierre. Sophia Strange. Alexandra May Sullivan. Grace Sullivan. Ella Claire Switzer. Trevor Tannis. Riley Tanner. Ellery Tarasuk. Denasia Thomas. Jaden Joseph Thomas. Caitlin Thomas. True Thomas. Sophie Thompson. Saksham Tuari. Tong Tong. Isaiah Torres. Logan Eric Trafford. Minto Kimbahante. Eddie Valley. Nico Vega. Michelle Velastigi. Theo Vitsky. J. Michael de la Camara Villanueva. Kehlani Lee Bengomani. Jalen Amar Walker. Grant James Walters. Bella Marley Ward. Riley Waterbury. Jonash Amaniki Watson. Grace Evelyn Wentzlin. Alonzea White. Noah Jasper White. Leah Liana Williams. Charlotte Wilson. Elizabeth Zapata. Elizabeth Zare. the students are making their way back to their seats. Can we have a round of applause for the class of 2023? even those up on stage, um, line up for the recession line where the graduates will exit. That's going to be straight down through um, past where the white chairs are even. Um, so if all the faculty members can head that way while I explain the next 
the next part of our program. While they're exiting in that way, can we give a round of applause to all of our faculty members right now? We are blessed with an amazing faculty. So this is the last part of our program, and it's the part that we initiated um, several years ago. Graduates, if you remember back to freshman year, Conard faculty and staff lined up in the main hallway cheering you on as you entered Conard High School for your first time. Many of you were embarrassed and shy and had no idea what to do as we were all cheering you into a building where you didn't know where you were going. Um, but now, as you leave Conard High School for your next stage in life, more mature, more confident and knowledgeable, we would like to send you off in the same manner. At this time, Mr. Hines will now take the stage to officially present the class. At this time, would the graduates please stand? Move your tassel from right to left. On behalf of Mr. Vecinos, Mrs. McKernan, Dr. Haskins, West Hartford Board of Education members and Conard High School faculty and staff, having met the requirements set forth by the West Hartford Board of Education, I present to you the graduates of Conard High School, class of 2023. We're going to leave the way we came in, straight back, straight back down the middle. Make sure you say goodbye to your teachers. 